Once you have that full customer onboarding in place and you're giving access to paid features, you'll inevitably start to have support requests where customers want to change their payment method on file, upgrade and downgrade between different tiers and plans, and maybe they'll want to cancel their plan. They may want to even see their invoice history. All of this is stuff that you would need to build if there weren't the customer portal. So the Stripe customer portal, again, is this very nice Stripe hosted surface where you can redirect customers to and they can handle all of their customer lifecycle management directly inside of the customer portal. Once they're done, they can be redirected back to your site. Technically, you could implement all of this yourself. It's all available through the API, updating payment methods on file, changing the subscription, maybe moving between different plan levels or moving from monthly to annual. That's all available through the Stripe API. And if you wanted to implement that yourself, you totally could. However, it's much, much faster if you just rely on and depend on the Stripe customer portal. This is gonna save you a ton of time. If the investments that Stripe is making in the customer portal to improve how localized it is, all of the different features, the different configurations that are available will save you a ton of time. So in my experience from building SaaS applications in businesses in the past, this was one of the most onerous projects that anyone had to undertake was managing billing and setting up all of these interfaces for customers to cancel their plan or change between plans. And now you can offload all of that to Stripe with a single API call to create this thing called a customer portal session. All right, so let's take a look at how that works. Right now, we're able to access our dashboard, but uh, what we want to do is add a button here that will bring us to the customer portal. We're going to head back into the terminal and Rails G controller. We're going to generate a new tr controller called Billings. Before we forget, let's go over to our routes and add this new resource for billing. And in our Billings controller, we're going to add a show route where we're gonna create the billing portal session and redirect there. But again, we want to ensure that we have a, a logged in user here. So we're gonna say before action, authenticate user. Now we're gonna create a billing portal session. Now, because we're using the page M, this is really easy. We can just say current user dot payment processor dot billing portal. And then we redirect to billing portal session URL. We need to allow other host again because the billing, the customer portal is again hosted on a Stripe domain and the status will again be see other. Now from our dashboard show page, we need to just add a link here. That's gonna go to manage billing, and this will be the, the billing path. And we are redirected to the customer portal. Now through our testing, we have a bunch of different payment method types in here. So let's actually go back and log out. We'll join today as a brand new user. We're signing up from scratch, heading over to our pricing, and we're gonna go to our monthly billing for the $28 a month plan. That seems like a good plan. We'll enter in some test card details here, and we're gonna say that we are in San Francisco, California, so we do have to pay some tax for this. We also want to uh, subscribe. You can notice if we wanted to, we could save our information for one-click checkout. We are also donating 1% of the subscription to help fight climate change. All right, so let's go over to our dashboard, and now we have this Manage Billing link. Click on Manage Billing, and now we are redirected to the customer portal. And we see that we have just one plan. If we wanted to, we can update our plan. We can switch between annual and monthly. Again, for all of our different uh, price points here, if we wanted to, let's go switch to the annual plan for startups. Again, if you wanted to, you can change the unit amount here for the startup. This is for like the number of seats. This is controlled via the portal config. Let's head over to the dashboard and see how we can configure the customer portal. We want to go to settings in test mode and we're going to our customer portal settings under the billing section. Now there's a lot of different stuff that you can enable or configure here, but the most important thing I want to show you is that our products here are again, need to follow that exact modeling of our other products. Now, one of the things that we wanted to disable was um, being able to control the subscription quantities because our application only supports 
one subscription at one level. There's not like separate seats. So we're gonna save that. And now when we come back over to our billing settings, we can no longer control the, the number of seats. So now we can confirm that. And our subscription is now fully updated. We will receive some webhook notifications in the back end, and those are gonna be handled by the PayGem. And again, now we can just see our dashboard, everything is provisioned. So that really offloads a lot of the work of the full customer lifecycle management to the customer portal. And that wraps up our entire demo. We really appreciate your time and attention. Hopefully this was useful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.